everybody and welcome to Museum Munchkins. I'm Mr. Nick and today we are talking all about the white-tailed deer. Have you ever heard of that animal before? Or maybe you've seen one before? Well, we're going to start off today by singing a song about white-tailed deer if you want to stand up on your feet. Great. Now, this song is actually, it's about white-tailed deer, but it's about a lot, lot of other animals too. And it's about one of my favorite words and that word is crepuscular can you guys say that word with me crepuscular okay how about can we say it really quietly like we're a super secret spy secret agent crepuscular very good yeah so crepuscular means animals who like to come out during the kind of darker times of our day, but not too dark, not at nighttime, like around just when the sun is setting, just when the sun is going down, and just when it's coming up in the morning. Those are the times that those animals like to be the most active. And they spend then the rest of the day and the night kind of sleeping. Maybe they're moving around a little bit, but they're the most active during those parts of the day. So we're gonna sing a song about being crepuscular. And I'm gonna sing it first once really slowly and we're gonna learn some motions that you can try to do at home while we sing our crepuscular song. Are you ready? Excellent. So this song goes like this. Well, I will sleep all through the night. So we'll put our hands on our, on our side of our face like that, like we're sleeping. And while the sun is shining bright, those aren't the times I like to be about. Kind of shake our finger like we, those aren't the times we like to play. But I like to watch the sun set down and watch it rise above the ground. Yeah, that's the time I like to run around. Very good. I'm crepuscular. I'm crepuscular. Dusk and dawn, my favorite time to play. I'm crepuscular. I'm crepuscular. That's just the simple white-tailed deer way. Very good. Do you want to try to sing that song all the way through now? Try to do those motions together? Here we go. I will sleep all through the night. And while the sun is shining bright, those aren't the times I like to be about. But I like to watch the sun set down and watch it rise above the ground. Yeah, that's the time I like to run around. I'm crepuscular, I'm crepuscular. Dusk and dawn, my favorite time to play. I'm crepuscular, I'm crepuscular. That's just the simple white-tailed deer way. All right, I'm gonna sing it all the way through and I want you to do the motions. Are you ready? I will sleep all through the night and while the sun is shining bright, those aren't the times I like to be about. But I like to watch the sun set down and watch it rise above the ground. Yeah, that's the time I like to run around. I'm crepuscular, I'm crepuscular. Dusk and dawn, my favorite time to play. I'm crepuscular, I'm crepuscular. That's just a simple white-tailed deer way. Very good. That was some excellent dancing and doing those motions. Thanks for following along with me to my crepuscular song. I'm going to put my guitar away so that we can talk all about white-tailed deer. Now, have you ever seen a white-tailed deer before? Maybe you have. If you live here in North America, or if you live down here in Central America, or even parts of Northern South America, 
then you've probably seen a white-tailed deer before because they're the most common animals with hooves in North America, Central America, and actually even South America. So they're really common animals for us to see around. And you might have known, let's see if, you might, if you've seen one, maybe you can re recognize them if I go through what they look like a little bit. So white-tailed deer have reddish brown or sometimes grayish brown fur, depending on what time of year it is. The boys that we call bucks have a pair of antlers on their heads and they have a white tail. So actually, the top side of their tail is brown and it blends in with their fur, but the bottom side of their tail is white. So when they flick it up like this, there's a bright, bright flash of white when they're running away so they can alert other deer about predators and so they can let those predators know that I see you, you're not as sneaky as you think you are. So they'll flash that white tail that they have up in the air as kind of a warning to other deers. And that's where they get their name, the white tail deer. So you've probably seen a white-tailed deer before if you live in any of those places. But even other places, like places in Europe and even way down here next to Australia in a country called New Zealand, we've even taken white-tailed deer there too. So we can find deer in a lot of places all around the world. So white-tailed deer come in lots of different sizes, too, depending on where you find them. Even though they're all the same kind of deer, some of them are a lot bigger, like the ones that we have around here in Wisconsin get a lot bigger. The boys, the bucks, can get to be about 150 to 300 pounds and be up to 7 feet long. That's a really big deer. And around here, the does get to be about 100 to 200 pounds, too. So a little bit smaller than the bucks, but they are still pretty big themselves. When you go further on down south into, like, Mexico and northern South America and things, the deer tend to be a little bit smaller. Or when they get over here into warmer states like Texas and Louisiana, places like that, places further down south in the United States, they're a little bit smaller, but up here in Wisconsin, we have really big deer, really big white-tailed deer. And like I said, one of the things that you'll recognize about them are these, they're antlers. So the bucks, the boys, have antlers on their heads, and they use those for a couple different things. They use those for scratching on trees and marking where their territory is, marking so that other uh, deer know that they've been in that area and that that belongs to another deer. They use them for fighting with each other. So the deers will actually come out and the two boy deers will actually smash their antlers together like that to try to fight each other. And humans actually even use antlers, the deer antlers, as deer calls. So they can, the deer, um, when if we have, uh, are trying to call deer out in the woods, if you had two antlers, you could smash them together like this and it would sound like two deer who are fighting and other deer would probably come and try to investigate and see what's going on. So humans can use these antlers too, but the, the deer mostly use them for fighting with each other, for, for pushing each other around um, and to see who's the strongest deer. So they have these antlers, but actually antlers are very different than horns. Some people call these horns but they're actually antlers. And the difference is that every single year, a white-tailed deer's antlers shed. They fall off their head and they have to grow new ones every summer. That's pretty interesting, I think. So if you go for a walk in the woods, places where deer live, you might actually find some antlers that have been shed, that have fallen off a deer's head, and they're regrowing new ones for the summer this year. But it's actually kind of hard to find them because antlers are also a good source of nutrition for lots of animals who live in the forest. Things like squirrels and voles and shrews and mice will come chew on the antlers to get calcium to make their bones nice and strong and to help keep their teeth nice and sharp. So sometimes we find antlers, but other animals like to eat these antlers too. Pretty interesting. <clears throat> now, 
their deer are so common around uh, around the world because they're great adapters. They're really good at learning how to live in new situations that, that they find themselves in. So they're really good at figuring that out. So lots of deer, when we think about deer, especially around here in Wisconsin, we think about them as living in forests, really lots of trees and things around. But they're also really good at living in warmer places or really dry forests or even big open grasslands. As long as there's places for them to make Make their dens to lay down and sleep during the day and during the night um, when they're not active since they're crepuscular um, then they're all good as long as they've got a place to sleep and food to eat those deer will make themselves at home and speaking of what do they eat do you know what a deer eats so deers are herbivores can you say that word too herbivore Herbivores are animals that eat plants. So deer really love to eat leaves. They like to eat grass and acorns and fruit and corn. And even the deer who live in, down in deserts, they like to eat cacti. Um, and they'll even eat things that might make like our stomachs a little upset if we were to eat them out in the wild. Things like wild mushrooms and even poison ivy. Yeah, deer can even eat poison ivy, which I think is pretty interesting. And actually, let's take a look at their teeth a little bit more closely. When a, people see a deer's teeth, a white-tailed deer's teeth, they sometimes think that they might be carnivores. So this might be teeth from a carnivore, an animal that eats meat, because those teeth look so sharp, and they are really pointy. But those kind of sharper teeth help them to eat all those different things that they like to that they like to chew on things like acorns and roots and fruits things that are a lot harder to crush with their with their small little front teeth so they've got these sharper big teeth in the back of their mouth to help them grind up those harder to eat plants that they like to eat or even tree bark that they like to eat sometimes and because white-tailed deer are so common all over the place they have a lot of predators, a lot of animals who like to eat them. <clears throat> so things that like to eat deer are wolves and cougars like mountain lions, alligators, jaguars, coyotes, and even humans. Humans are also predators of deer. So we hunt and eat deer too, humans do. Um, but the predators have to watch out because remember they have that that bright white tail that helps them to, to let other deer know that there are predators in the area and that they see those predators and deer are really fast. A white-tailed deer can run about 45 miles an hour and if they're out in the open, a white-tailed deer can jump as high as nine feet in the air and they can jump 30 feet long. That's a really big jump. That would be like you running and jumping at the beginning of a bus and then landing at the end of the bus without touching the ground at all in the middle. They can jump really, really, really far. And deer usually live in kind of a family group, kind of a looser family group. But does, the girls, live in groups with other does and all of their babies called fawns. And the boys will live in their own group. All the bucks will live in their own group through most of the year. And then during parts of the year, the does and the bucks will actually merge their families together so that they can make more fawns. And now, deer are pretty hard to spot sometimes when we're looking for them in the wild. And I've got a story today to read to you about just that. A little boy who's going looking for some white-tailed deer. So let's walk, uh, sit down and we're going to watch and listen. And maybe you can get some pointers on how to go for a deer watch yourself. Because this book is called The Deer Watch. It was another summer in the house that smelled like old trees and where the seagulls on the roof believed they owned the place. 
I didn't mind their noise because we were here to look for deer. It was the year my dad had promised that I'd get to see one, a doe or a buck at last. And so we planned and got up early the next day. As soon as, they, as there were pink streaks in the morning sky, we headed out at dawn. That's when the deer like to come out because they're crepuscular. In the dunes, the sand slipped underneath our feet and made it hard to climb up to the top. Everything below us looked so small. No speck of deer, no flecks of gull, a buoy like a painted cork and a boat with a moth's wing sail. No deer at all. Next, we looked into the marsh grass where the deer come down to drink or take a bath before most people are awake. We saw a red-winged blackbird and one tall, sh white, shaggy bird, its neck a question mark. Egret, said my dad. On the road, a bulldozer was moving like a giant snail. It growled and sputtered so we couldn't hear the birds. The hammering and drilling got so loud I had to hold my ears. A workman told us how a doe had come here searching for the deer corn that the hunters left and how the crew had scared her off. No deer here now for sure. Too noisy for those deer. We had to walk and walk to find a green stretch open to the sky. There was a pond, a shiny mirror full of trees all upside down and water lilies right side up. Conservation land, said Dad, and told how all the land for miles around looked like this once. The fields were dotted with bright wildflowers and scrub pine that the deer could scratch against. I knew they'd like it here. I started pushing through the brush, but then Dad stopped me and we stood all quiet for a while until I said, there's nothing moving. And Dad said, it just seemed that way how baby birds were opening their beaks, while little foxes tussled in their dens and mother squirrels went scavenging for food. I squinted to look harder for the animals my dad had talked about. I hoped they wouldn't frighten off the deer. My feet began to dance. I swatted at a fly. My throat was dry as sand. Dad told how when there weren't so many folks around, he'd seen a silver fox in this same spot and how there'd soon be blueberries that we could pick, enough to make a pie. But it wasn't blueberries or foxes that we'd come to find. And even though this waiting was so hard, I knew we had to do it for that deer. I hopped from one foot to the next until I scared two rabbits off and had to shut my eyes to make my feet stay still. Then all at once, we noticed something moving through the bushes. Branches swiveled side to side. <gasps> hey, look, I whispered just before I achoo, sneezed and one fat pheasant that we hadn't seen rose up into the air. I bet that bird will tell the deer to stay away, I wailed. Then we'll go someplace where they won't expect us, said my dad. The sky was changing fast with yellow patches fading into purple clouds. The wind was cooler. Darkness fell like separate shadows where the sun had shone before. <gasps> Should we go back? I asked. Just as the lightning cracked and thunder came so close, I grabbed Dad's hand. The clouds dumped instant puddles, drenched everything around. The rain was warm. We turned our faces to it and stuck out our tongues. But then it stopped as quick as it had come. Do deer go out and drink the rain? Or do they hide away somewhere and wait? Still dripping, we continued on till Dad stood still. Look over there, he said so softly I almost didn't hear him, and I didn't see a thing. Over where I'm pointing, but don't move. I held my breath until it burned my chest and I could just make out a white and pointy flag with one beside it. They both twitched. Don't say a word, Dad said. Then I saw her. 
Stepping from the shadows, she looked at me, at me, then leaped into the air. The little flags bounced too. I could see they were the tails of two small deer. A doe and her two fawn, fawns, I said quietly as I could, while trying desperately to keep the three in sight until they disappeared into their green world. The long walk home along the stream, past conservation land, by all those houses being built, then through the marsh and over the dunes, I tried to think how I could see that doe and her two fawns again. There had to be a way. When mom came out, I ran to tell her about the doe and how those twins had twitchy tails. You're such a lucky boy, she said. But I couldn't tell the, seem to tell the rest. So deep inside me, I knew the memory would never leave, and those deer had suddenly appeared. The way they'd quickly run away, as if they'd come from nowhere, like Dad said, or as if our two worlds crossed for just a magic while. The end. That little boy had to be so patient, didn't he, while he was looking for those deer with his dad. And that's sometimes how it goes when you're out in the forest looking for animals, looking for wildlife. You have to be really quiet and really still and very patient while we're looking for animals in the forest, especially if you want to see an animal so quick and so fast as a white-tailed deer. Now I've got a really fun activity that we're gonna do today about white-tailed deer. I'm just gonna scoot my cart a little bit closer here. We are going to make some white-tailed deer out of a brown paper lunch bag. So for this activity, you're going to need a brown paper lunch bag, or if you don't have one of these, you could also use a paper plate. That would work great too. We're gonna need some scissors and a glue stick and a marker. And then we're gonna need a piece of white paper and a piece of brown paper. And since we weren't able to do Munchkins live today, since we had to record it early, unfortunately I don't get to answer any of your questions while we're making this craft, but I would love to answer some of your questions um, if you want to leave them and type them in the comments below this video, we're going to be answering those questions all day today. So make sure that you keep an eye out for an answer to your question. So the first thing that I'm going to do on my brown piece of paper is I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to trace it two times on my brown piece of paper. And I'm going to use those two hands that I've traced to make some deer antlers. So I've traced my two hands like this, and now I'm gonna cut them out. So all of my fingers will be kind of the little branches and the little points that we see on a deer's antlers. And that's actually, um, if you, you might have heard people talking about points on deer. And that's what they mean. They don't mean like scoring points like in a, in a sports game, like in basketball or football or baseball or scoring points on a video game. They mean how many points do they have on their antlers? So my deer that I'm gonna make, since I have one, two, three, four, five fingers, will have five points. All right, there's one of my hands. I'm going to cut out one more. Gonna go really quickly here while we cut this out. So I have to make sure that I'm careful with my scissors and I cut around each of my fingers. I wouldn't accidentally want to cut one of my fingers off on my hand or on my paper. So I have to be really careful when I'm using scissors. Do you know how to use scissors yet? Maybe that's something that you're practicing right now. And you're practicing on getting better at using your scissors. And maybe that's something that someone has to help you with too. And that's okay. 
It took a little while for me to learn how to use my scissors when I was little. All right, and now I'm gonna take my white paper and I'm gonna cut sort of like a football shape. Just like this, kind of like a big leaf. And then I'm actually going to take my brown paper and I'm gonna draw a line around that little football shape that I made. Cause we're gonna make our white tailed deer needs to have a white tail. So I'm gonna kind of draw around it here, just like this. Perfect. So now I've got my little like, my white football and my little brown tail here that I'm gonna to use to cover up the white part of my tail. Cut this one out too. And then I'm going to glue these two together, just like this, kind of like a little sandwich. I'm gonna glue both of these pieces of paper together. So then one side is brown and one side is white. Let's glue those together. Perfect, see now one side is brown and one side is white. And I'm actually gonna take, I think, my, my scissors and I'm gonna cut, make some cuts in the side of my tail just like this, so then it will look a little kind of fuzzy. We call that like a fringe when we cut on the side of paper like that. So I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm just making little tiny cuts up and down. So then I can kind of bend them in and out like this and it'll make my tail look kind of fuzzy. Since deer have kind of these white, brown, fuzzy, fluffy tails, then I'm gonna kind of bend a little fold right here so that I can glue it to my paper bag like this and that way then my white tailed deer's tail can go up and down so I can make sure that this white tailed deer is able to let me know if there's a predator around see now I've got his little tail on here and I can let him go whoa now there's a predator around you better run away and hide Perfect, I've got his tail glued on now. And now I'm gonna take my two antlers and I'm gonna glue those on the front of my bag. So I'm gonna put one dot of glue in one corner and one dot of glue in another corner. I don't need very much. So I just put some glue here and here. And now I'm gonna take my antlers and I'm gonna stick them onto my bag just like this. Perfect. And I've got one more thing I need to do. I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna draw a little nose for my deer and two eyes. Kind of got some small eyes on this bag. And this deer, this deer's antlers are really, really big. I think this deer might have some trouble moving around through the forest. Maybe this is a deer whose antlers are so big who lives out in the grasslands. Perfect. So I drew a couple little eyes and a nose and a little mouth, a little smile. And there we go, we've got our little paper bag deer. And again, if you don't have a paper bag at home like this, you could also use a paper plate um, to make your deer if you're interested and doing that to you too. Well, I'm so glad you all joined me today to learn all about white-tailed deer, and I can't wait to see what animal we're gonna be learning about next week. I hope you guys tune in, and thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.